Hi, welcome to Brooke Talks Books. I'm Brooke Vitale, and today I'd like to talk to you about the six things that you need to know in order to write a great picture book. Everybody thinks that writing a picture book is easy, and the truth is putting the words on paper might be easy, but writing a good book, a great book, a book that everybody's gonna talk about, it's not the same thing. Writing a fantastic picture book means understanding picture books. It means reading a ton of picture books. It means getting the mechanics of how they go together. But before any of that, there are certain things that you need to keep in mind. So today, we're gonna to talk about those top six things. And they are page count, target audience, word count, content, illustrations, and the top selling themes for picture books. So let's start with page count. Traditionally speaking, a picture book is 32 pages. The reason for that comes from the way that paper is put together at a traditional offset printer. Pages are folded, folded, and folded again until you end up with what we call a signature, which is 16 pages. Two signatures are then bound together, which makes your 32 page picture book. Now, when you're looking at your picture book, you're going to have one page that's dedicated to your title, one page that's dedicated to your copyright. Maybe you have an extra one for your dedication, but that means that you're going to actually have somewhere between 28 and 30 pages for your storytelling. Now, if you plan to go for traditional publishing, you don't necessarily need to know that your book is gonna be 32 pages because you're not going to tell a publisher how everything is going to pace out. However, under the understanding the mechanics of how a picture book comes together is gonna to be really important as you look at the general pacing of your story. If you plan to go for self-publishing, you do have a little bit more wiggle room. The top two ways to self-publish that don't go through an offset printer are to use Ingram Spark and KDP. They both have different page count requirements KDP requires that all of your books be divisible by four, while Ingram requires that a page count be divisible by two. That being said, it really is best to keep in, in mind that 32 page count for a picture book so that you're really falling in line with the standard for what books are. So then moving on to what the target audience is for a picture book. The target audience for a picture book is kids between the ages of three to seven. So what does that mean? It means that you need to be telling a story that kids in that age range can engage with. Kids who are three and four years old do not have the same life experiences as kids who are 10, 11, and 12 years old. They don't understand things that a 10, 11, and 12 year old understands, and they're not going to be interested in the same kinds of things. That's why picture books often tell somewhat simplistic stories. That's not to say that there can't be real depth to a picture book, there can be. But if you're looking at something, for example, a book about bullying, for a picture book, it's probably going to be a lighter take on it. It's not going to be something really heavy because kids at that age can't handle really heavy. So what you want is to create a book that can engage children at that age, something that's gonna keep them actively involved in the book. Young kids have notoriously short attention spans. If your book is going for too long, they're just gonna lose interest in it. If it's not something that's grabbing their attention, they're going to lose interest at it. Take a look at these pages from Mo Willems' Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. This is a perfect example of how to engage a child with a book. As you can see, as you move through the books, the child is encouraged to shout at the pigeon to tell him that no, he cannot drive the bus. And in doing so, that keeps them moving through every page of the story. It keeps them happy, it keeps them excited. Now, what is the thing that keeps a kid most excited? Story that's moving forward. And what stops that from happening? Sometimes it's your word count. The target word count for a picture book is a thousand words. That's really the most that your book should ever be. The sweet spot for a picture book is between 500 and 700 words. Now, 
That is not to say that a book can't be good if it's over a thousand words. It can be. What that means is that if your book is over a thousand words, it really better merit those extra words. Take a look at these pages from The Day the Crayons Quit. This is a book that is above the thousand word mark. And to be honest, this one had trouble finding representation. It did find it, but as you can see, each of these pages is a letter unto itself. It stands alone and it needs all of the context that's there for the story to make sense. If you are going for a traditional publishing where your first stop is going to be looking for an agent most of the time, you really need to do your best to stay hard and fast to that thousand word rule. The truth is a lot of agents have that as a rule and if they see that your book is over that word count, they're gonna turn it down without even reading it. So think about where you can cut along the way in your book. Are there moments that you love, but that aren't really needed? Are there moments that don't further the story at all? Are there moments where you are using your words to explain what is happening on a page, to tell us what's going on. With a picture book, the art tells the story as much as the text does. So for example, if you are telling us a story about a man in a green hat who stole a purse and is running away, we certainly need to know in the text that he's in a green hat because that is gonna help us find him in the art, it's gonna help us identify him. But if it's just a man, if that doesn't matter, if you're just telling us a car is driving down the road, we don't need to know what color the car is. If it's not an imperative part of the story, remember to let your art tell the story along with it. So that brings us to the point of illustrations. And as I said, the key thing about picture books is that art and text work together. Take a look at this page from Clifford, the Big Red Dog. This is an older book, but it is a perfect example of how art and text work together. Looking at this page, you can see that the art tells us a piece of the story that the text does not. We can see that there's a phone call because there's something wrong with Clifford, but it's the art that shows us that he's grown to the second floor of an apartment building. At no point in the text are we actually told that he's gotten this big. So the two pieces work together Here's another example from the book Chicken in School. In this book, we see the main character, Zoe, telling the characters that crayons are for creating imagination, but she doesn't tell us what that imagination is. However, if you look at the art, you can see that she has used her crayons to draw a circus and outer space, and she has created a whole vividly, vivid world of imagination but none of that is conveyed in the text. So again, make sure that your art is telling your story too, which brings us to the point of, if you're working on a book, how much do you wanna tell an artist or a publisher about the art in your book? If you are trying to go for a traditional publisher or an agent, they do not necessarily want to know what your vision for art for a page is gonna look like. So send a manuscript that does not contain art notes unless there is something that is imperative that they know. If there is something, for example, like the fact that Clifford is now two stories tall, that the story doesn't make sense without, by all means, include that in your art note. However, if you're just telling us that the little girl is wearing Mary Jane's and has curly hair, this is not a thing that your publisher needs to know. If, on the other hand, you are planning to self-publish your book, you will want to not only break your book up by pages so that your designer and your illustrator know where each page turn is going, you will want to include very descriptive art notes for your illustrator. Now, if you're lucky, you will end up with an illustrator who has a vision of their own and can bring things to the table that you could never imagine. The best artists can absolutely do that. but it is your book and it is your job to make sure that your vision for it is being conveyed. So do make sure that you give art notes for 
your book so that the illustrator has an idea of what it is that you want to see on the page. Now, to the content of the book. The first thing I would like to address is the elephant in the room, rhyming books. We have all heard it. Publishers don't like rhyming books. They're not going to take them. Don't try. It's not true. There's absolutely nothing wrong with rhyming books. The problem is that most rhyming books simply aren't done well. There are plenty of amazing rhyming books out there that are published by traditional publishers. Take a look at this page from Llama Llama Red Pajama. As you can see, this book is in rhyme. And this is a whole series of books that has done phenomenally well. Here's another example from Little Blue Truck. Again, another book in rhyme that has spawned an entire series. However, more often than not, rhyming books do not have good meter. The rhymes feel forced. The story feels forced around finding a word that rhymes. So if you want to go for a rhyming book, whether you are trying to do this for traditional publishing or whether you are trying to do this for self-publishing, get somebody to work with you who knows rhyme inside and out. Get somebody to help edit your book to make sure that your rhyme is perfect. Rhyme works best with books that are of a simple nature. The more complicated a story, the harder it is to fit emotions in, the harder it is to fit difficult subject matter in because you're trying to fit it with that meter, with the rhyming words. But simple, easy stories, those are fine. That's why most often you see the best rhyming books are about simple things like going to bed or going to the farm or going to the store. They're all really easy experiences that kids of a young age can understand. If you plan to do a rhyme, read it out loud. Have people you don't know read it out loud. See where they're tripping over your words. Good rhyme is like a waltz. Every step goes in the right place, but if you miss step, you're gonna fall down. You're gonna trip your partner and they're not going to enjoy your book. So you need to make sure that it's impeccable or else it's not worth doing. Now, as far as the rest of the content for picture books, remember that picture books are for young kids. There is absolutely nothing wrong with introducing children of this age to more difficult language, to using words that they might not be familiar with. However, you don't just wanna throw big words into your story for the sake of throwing big words into your story. You want to make sure that they are in a context that the kid can use to decipher them. Whether that means using the art to decipher what the word means, or it means using the rest of the story around it. What you don't want is a child stopping every four words saying, what does that mean? What does that mean? I don't understand what's that word because that interrupts the flow of the story. And once that starts happening again, kids have short attention spans and they're likely to wander away from the story and not care how it ends because they've already stopped to ask eight questions about the words in your book. The other thing when it comes to writing a picture book is keeping in mind what is going to interest children. Like I said, young kids have not a huge amount of life experience. There aren't a lot of things that they are familiar with. And as they get a little bit older, of course they learn more. That's why there are so many books out there on first day of school because kids are still in picture book age at that point and it's something that they're fearful of and it's something that it helps them to understand something that's coming their way. But I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the top selling themes for picture books, which are and have been for a very long time the same. The number one theme for picture books is bedtime. And this makes sense because it's something that children have experienced literally from day one of their lives. They understand bedtime routines. They understand what it means to go to sleep. And they understand all the pieces that go with that. Putting on pajamas, brushing their teeth, getting their stuffed animals. It's something that they get. Another top selling theme has always been farm. And the reason for that is because again, it's something that is familiar to children. We start kids off from the youngest of age with language, teaching them things like the cow says moo, the sheep says ba. So all of those sounds when they're incorporated into a book, 
it's familiar to them. They can help make the sounds in the book. They can recognize the animals in the book. And it's fun for them, particularly at a really young age, to be able to recognize, to point and say, cow, sheep, pig. It gives them a sense of pride in what they're reading. Another top selling theme has always been ABC books. And again, this is because we use our ABC books to teach children. Books are fantastic for entertainment, but they also are a method to teach our children things. And that's why parents like ABCs. It's something that gets kids moving on to their next level, preparing to read for themselves. And that's always welcoming. Now, the other area where we've seen a big trend in publishing books is on holidays. The top selling holiday has always been Christmas and truth is it probably always will be because people buy gifts for Christmas so they want to know that they can put their book out and have somebody purchase it for that holiday. The other top themes for holiday are Easter and Halloween. Easter because it goes into Easter baskets. Parents buy them. Easter books tend to be cheaper. They tend to be board books often or a little eight by eight books that might cost $3.99, $4.99. They're not as often picture books because parents are looking for something affordable to put into that Easter basket. The other piece of it is Halloween. And Halloween is just honestly good fun. Who doesn't love monsters and zombies and superheroes? So it's something that kids enjoy. And again, because most kids love Halloween, it's something they understand. That being said, we are seeing smaller holidays on the rise with picture book sales. Mother's Day, Father's Day, graduation, these are all huge opportunities. And the reason is that there's promotional moments around it. If you were to go to a bookstore at Mother's Day or Father's Day or graduation time, you would find that there are tables dedicated to these books because parents are looking to buy them. Really one of the most up and coming ones is graduation because with a nice inspirational book that doesn't have a strong graduation themed message, but just an inspirational themed message, that gets given to graduates of preschool, of elementary school, middle school, high school, college, graduate school. One of the best selling books year after year, every single May is Dr. Seuss's Oh, The Places Will Go. If you look at the bestseller list, and here's a copy, you can see it's inspirational books. That's what's hitting at graduation time. If you were to look at the bestseller list in May, you would see Mother's Day. In June, you would see Father's Day. That's always going to be near the top of the list. There might be other books beating it out, particularly new picture books that just happen to be doing really well, but you'll see the bulk of that is sitting there. In, in February, end of January, you're going to see a lot of Valentine's Day books. That's just what's happening. There is a catch to this, and that is most publishing houses are looking for something to fill the slot for each of these holidays, but they really can't take much because they have a whole backlist that's filling this slot. So while they might be looking for a Christmas book, they're probably looking for a Christmas book. If you're planning to self-publish your book, you are not the only one who is looking to self-publish a book against that theme. So make sure that your book is standing out in some way. This is also true as you look at your themes for books that are circling around trends. Keep in mind what other people are doing and what is coming out. Like I said, there are a lot of books around, for example, the first day of school. And that will continue to be popular, but you need to find out how exactly your book is different from every other book that's out there. If it's something that you're publishing that's coming out against a trend where that bubble is coming to an end, be aware if you're self-publishing that you might have already missed the window. Do your research into what else is out there because you might be surprised while you think that you've had a unique idea to find that you're actually the 200th person to have that idea. And so you're gonna be in direct competition with everybody else who is doing the exact same thing. If you can keep all of those things in mind, if you can go out and know that your book is different than everybody else's book, if you know that it's something that's going to speak to the heart of what a four to seven year old really understands, if you've kept in mind your word count, if your art is not just illustrating what's happening in the story, but it's enhancing it in some way, if you've planned for your book to be the right page count, 
then you should be in a really good place to make sure that what you're writing is a good picture book. I wish you luck and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. For more information on the services I provide, visit me at brookvitale.com.